Nobody said starting a business would be easy. Unfortunately, starting a business is not easy. So, anyway, I've got some uh, announcements to make. Not going to go through the whole spiel. But uh, basically, as it is right now, so Genetry Solar um, is a company that is still in its startup phase. We're still waiting on our main product to be completed so that we can start selling that. We have a, um, a 6 kilowatt inverter that's redesigned that we're waiting to be able to sell that. But the, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, well, I'll just get right to it. I, personally, am going to have to go and get a full-time job. This is not a indication of weakness on our company, but there's a lot of factors that, are, that go into this. And how is that going to affect you? I'll get into that in the video. So let's first talk about all the factors. This 12 kilowatt inverter has costed quite a bit of money to develop for. I mean, we never started out with a whole bunch of money in the bank. We didn't have capital from other companies that wanted to invest in us. We started out with literally zero dollars. We were fortunate to have PowerJack as a supporter for our company because we basically buy inverters from them. The 12,000 watt inverter, the 6,000 watt inverter are manufactured in their factories. So we support them, they support us. That's been pretty clear from the very beginning. Um, so with their support, it was a lot easier to be able to get off the ground because we had their factories, we were getting good prices, and so we were able to sell our inverters for a lower price. So what we wanted to do to enter the market, sell the lower price, get noticed, and then basically take it from there. So the uh, the first blow was obviously when I stopped repairing inverters for PowerJack. I'm not going to get into the reasons why that happened. Uh, some of you out there know who I've talked to and I trust, but uh, I stopped basically doing repair services for PowerJack, which was, at the time, my primary income. And we basically just started focusing exclusively, or at least I did, exclusively on our inverter line, getting those made. But as time went on, obviously, as I said before, starting an inverter company is not easy. We ran into a lot of issues. We had some things that we needed to solve. And I do apologize if you see an occasional fly around here. I had the window cracked, and of course, that's when they all decide to fly in. Um, so there's one or two around here that likes to, just like the cats, likes to be in the camera. Anyways, so um, putting all of our focus on this inverter and the problems or challenges. I won't say problems. Problems means failure. Challenges, okay? We'll say challenges. When this 12 kilowatt inverter here, all the way going all the way back to a year ago, February, when we first received our first prototype of the 12K, we were probably months away from launching that unit, this that you see on the wall. And because of my own testing with my own needs, with my own house, we discovered a lot of things that we needed to improve on, which started the journey of Revision C. We knew that we could not launch this 12K with a revision A or revision B board in it. We knew that we had a lot of work to do. So we put all of our efforts and focus into designing the components for the 12,000 watt unit, particularly the revision C board, which delayed things. Designing the board, producing the board, it all had to be handmade because the factory wasn't making these. And to try to save costs, we converted our revision B boards to revision C. So I had to send all those boards to Sid. And he and his family had to hand make the revision C boards. 
So there's a lot of cost involved, a lot of time involved, a lot of delays, things like that. A lot of testing had to be done. We would encounter the occasional issue. I mean, we're not perfect, obviously. This is a from the ground up company. So if a particular customer had a particular issue, then we had to go and sit down and figure out how to prevent this issue from happening in the future. I'm not talking about catastrophic failures. I'm not talking about fire risks. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about maybe the inverter stopped powering on. Why? Okay, well this little chip here that we're using is not up to snuff or maybe it saw a spike in voltage or something like that. So now we're going to use a different chip that will handle much more. Well, we fix that problem. Okay, well this power button is no longer lighting up. What's the problem with that? Okay, well there's a loose connection on the back of the power button. How are we going to fix that? You know, it's nothing catastrophic like, like the inverter caught fire or anything else like that. We're talking about when you have all the inverters in the field and you have all the different needs from all the different customers, we discover issues. Our customers have never lost a dollar, so we warranty our inverters. We replace them or fix them at our cost, and we get that customer back online. Okay? So through all of that is the evolution of revision C, C2, C3, all of the adjustments that we have made, all of the things that Sid has brainstormed as to protecting the equipment as much as possible. And in my opinion, going way above and beyond our competition for creating an inverter that is basically bulletproof. You can never truly call any piece of equipment bulletproof, but we have thought of basically everything that we can think of that is practically allowed to be added to our inverters to protect them so if you make a mistake if there's a surge on the lines if something happens the inverter is safe the inverter will keep working and you don't have to worry about the mosfets blowing out or the inverter just burning up or something else like that you don't have to worry about any of that stuff why because we have engineered in all of these safeties and protections to reduce the chance that an inverter will experience a catastrophic failure and it's been a long learning process. I have made mistakes with this particular inverter that you see on the wall and the inverter that preceded it. I have made those mistakes, which has been a good learning experience because we've been able to take that information and say, okay, how can we prevent that mistake from damaging the inverter? And that's where the time has come in. Designing this, getting the parts, etc. So anyway, the point is, is that it's taken a long time not because we're sitting on our hands, but because we have to test parts. We have to get suppliers. A lot of time was spent with Sid trying to find an alternative MOSFET or be able to use basically any MOSFET instead of relying on one single MOSFET that we know works, which is in this inverter right now. We know it works, but we didn't want to depend on just a single MOSFET. If stocks dry up or if costs go way up, something like that. We wanted to be able to fall back on alternatives that would have a similar quality and reliability. Unfortunately, Sid spent a lot of time on that and was not able to solve that issue. And it's really rare for me to say Sid couldn't figure it out. That doesn't mean he's given up. It just means that we had to shift gears because this was going on for a long time and we finally had to say, okay, if we have to pay a little bit more for the MOSFETs that work, that's what we're going to do because we have to get this inverter moving forward. We can't just hold up on one part out of a desire to, to basically have a, uh, a fallback on parts. And yes, there is a risk in that, of course, that if the supplier of our fets that we use in this inverter dries up, then we're in a difficult position. But it's something that can be worked on over time while this product is being finalized, rather than stopping to solve this problem before moving forward because the inverter works fine and it works great with the fets that we're using. That's just one example. That is not an indication. I'm not trying to convey that Sid did something wrong. Uh, we both supported the idea of having alternative uh, FETs for the inverter, but two FETs are not the same 
and some of the FETs that we were using would blow up on low loads. And we found Miller capacitance was in there. So it was doing all this stuff and he was trying to figure out a combination of resistors, etc., that would bring this, you know, be so that we could have a universal FET that didn't count on a specific FET. So yes, it was important, but it was taking so long to figure that out that we eventually had to stop and switch gears. So the, the overall point, I'm not working for PowerJack, so I'm not bringing in any money to help pay the bills. We put all of our money, or the most pre predominant majority of our money, into the R&D for this unit here. So all of the 6Ks that we were selling went to fund this. And we have bills that we pay. We have electricity we still have to pay for, unfortunately. We got mortgage. We have food. We have gas. We are no different than anyone else. And if Genetry Solar isn't bringing in any money to help pay for expenses, then I have to make the decision to get a job to pay for our expenses since Genetry Solar is no longer supporting my personal life, which is basically just bills, mortgage, whatever. So at that point, you know, you get to the point where you're like, you know, what, what are you supposed to do? So with the cost of food going up, I mean, yesterday I made nachos and spent $40. I wasn't in excess. I got a pound and a half of ground beef and a couple of bags of chips, a bag of cheese, a thing of sour cream, some sauce, some seasoning. It was $40 and a pop. I got a two liter pop. It's $40 to make two trays of nachos. That's insane when you think about it. And you could argue that, well, just live on ramen noodles and soup for the rest of your life and you'll be fine. You can only live on that for so long. Yes, if things get really desperate, that's what you can do, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to try to improve my situation. So basically, with me getting a full-time job, I don't know what hours it's going to be. I don't know where it's going to be. I've been applying to places, looking. Um, I was really hoping that the 12K would be ready, but I stand by my beliefs that I'm not going to launch a product that is not ready because it will be more detrimental. We'll pay for it on the other end when we have returns and I had to pay for all the shipping and all that stuff, it's too risky. And I couldn't sleep at night anyway, knowing that I'm sending out a subpar unit. So until this is completed, and until we get stock in, I'm basically going to be out there working full time. This is not a, you need to feel sorry for me video, but how this is going to affect you is that my phone system, it's gonna stay online obviously during its normal business hours, but I might have to adjust when I'm able to respond when I'm able to make phone calls. I mean, I get a lot of phone calls, a lot of text messages, a lot of emails. That's probably going to have to go to the side, and it seems like it's already bad enough now, but you know, I have to make some decisions here. And since the majority of my contacts are PowerJack customers, and I'm not obligated to keep supporting PowerJack because they don't really pay me to do so, um, that's one thing that I can drop and I kept I keep doing it because I understand the position that many people are in because I've been in that position before and on occasion we do get a conversion so somebody will give up on their power jet converter and they will buy a Genetry solar inverter so there is you know it's it's a I don't push in that direction I don't say uh, just throw it away by Genetry solar but they eventually concede that the, the, the Genetry Solar Inverter would be better for them. So that's why I continue to support PowerJack Inverters because there was the occasional conversion from PowerJack to Genetry Solar. But since we do not have any more stock of any inverters right now, we're completely out, and we've put all of our money into this inverter, I basically have some choices to make. 
I have to go get a job, a full-time job, not some part-time that's going to bring in a few hundred dollars extra a month. We're talking full-time. I have to. There's, there's no two ways about it. And everybody's hiring, everybody, right now. Wages are obviously up, even though costs are up, but wages are up. But you need some supplemental income to be able to do this. And I've talked a little bit about this to some close circle friends <clears throat> that watch my videos and like, well, why don't you just charge for your service for PowerJack? Even if I could charge a dollar an hour, I'm. it's not going to get very far. I need a solid and stable income, basically. That's it. So with that in mind, I mean, <clears throat> I've been offered loans. I can't tell you how many times people have said, well, if you if you take my offer on this this loan, but then you look at the interest rate and you think to yourself, man, that's terrible. PayPal hounds me about uh, taking a business loan, uh, but their fees associated with such loan is borderline illegal in my opinion. It's um, the the loan, the the interest rates, the the fees, you know. If you're taking a $10,000 loan and you're paying $1,000 up front for said loan, and then it's an additional 8 or 10% on top of that per every sale, it's not exactly the best loan that you can get. You might as well just go to one of those check-and-go places and, and take a loan there. Um, so, And I've been approached by individuals whom I don't know if they're real or not, but you know, they they have a, we'll buy a part of your business to infuse you with cash and, and things like that. And it's just, I don't want to lose control of my business. We've worked so hard to get to this point. I'm not going to say, okay, give us $100,000. We'll give you 25% of the income for the rest of the, the, um, uh, the company. I mean, I'm not going to do that because then I lose what we've worked so hard to, to, to do. And that's, product you see here the the good thing is that when the 12 K's start coming in when the 6 K's start coming in and that income comes back the good news is our costs should be really low because we don't have to re-engineer a whole unit we don't have to re-engineer a D board or any of that other stuff because you know that's it, the, the most difficult part has been the last year year and a half with the 12K, it's taking a lot of work. And I still think to myself, it doesn't matter how I explain it, where I go with it, there's going to be some sticker shock for some people when they see the price of this unit. I already know approximately how much I'm gonna have to charge, but I'm not doing it so that I can buy an island or anything else like that. We have so much cost tied up into this, we have to recoup that. And we have to be able to sustain our business moving forward. We can't just order one inverter that we've sold and be done with it. We have to order two inverters. For every one sale, we order two inverters. That way we have got another inverter that's ready to sell. We sell that inverter, we order another one on top of that. It's a, it's, you know, a two to one. That way you can keep stock flowing keep your money flowing and then you can sustain yourself you can't just order you know you can't just buy inverters and then only buy those inverters that are sold you have to be able to order extra stock and with our inverters supporting three phase for example there's three inverters right there so order six um, you know things like that so it's a difficult decision I think the, the most thing that I've been worried about the most is the phone systems because that is my, my front end to not only our current customers but also potential customers. And the the loan offers that I've gotten have been, you know, there's been some that are better than others, but unfortunately the cost is just too high to be able to do that. So I would rather just go out and get a job because there's nobody that's offering free money. Nobody. It's... I'll give you this money, which is normal. I mean, that's what you expect, which is normal. I'll give you this money if you give me X dollars back or a percentage of your company or whatever. Um, so as of now, as of right now, 
you know, the job hunt is it's been on for a little while, been looking around, applied to a couple places, but now it's in full swing. And until um, until the stock is flowing, until the sales are flowing on the 6K and 12K, and it's coming in on a regular basis, it's just the way it's going to be. And I'm not going to set up some GoFundMe thing. I'm not going to do a Patreon make people feel obligated that they have to pay for something this is not a pity party video this is a fact of the matter is inflation's on the rise costs are on the rise uh, taxes are going up um, we can't avoid that and until the business the company has a positive cash flow I'm gonna have to go out and support my family I did it for 20 years working and was hoping that the business would then become my primary job but starting a business is not easy we were able to ride it for a while but now we can't we just can't anymore uh, you know the costs are going up I mean you saw we got we got a, a hybrid car because gas prices were so high which helped with that now food prices are high we're trying to grow our own food but that requires a lot of work and time stuff doesn't grow overnight so we're trying to do things to improve our situation, but it's uh, Genetry Solar just cannot support this family currently. So that's why I'm going out to get a job, full-time job, maybe even two jobs. I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. But you know, we've got we've got money that we have to have come in, and we we just have to do what we have to do. So anyway, that's pretty much it, I guess. Um, I will obviously make an announcement you know I don't know if I'm gonna have a stable I know my hours every week job or if it's gonna be fluctuating I don't know but I will do my best obviously to continue to answer phone calls and text messages and emails uh, even if it's after hours or whatever I'll, I'll do my best uh, but it is what it is I mean that's just life a lot of people have it way worse than I do so I'm blessed that I have what I have now and for us to be able to stay here on this property, you know, things things have to be done. That's the way it is. So anyway, um, thanks again for all your support. Hoping the 12K. I mean, you know, we just I can't I can't really even say anymore. I'm hoping for soon. I, I just I just can't because I've been saying that since January. And here we are seven months later. Nobody's fault, but it's hard to say soon anymore on the 12K when I've been saying that for the longest time. Maybe that's my fault, but our quest to perfect this 12K has unfortunately caused a side effect of delays. Again, nobody's fault. Not pointing fingers at anybody, not blaming anybody. We have to create a near perfect product because if we don't and I get returns then we haven't done a service to us ourselves or you so that's why we're waiting some people have said hey take my money now and then when the pre-orders go live great I can wait but I cannot in good conscience hold on to that money knowing that it's going to be used for business expenses and then if you change your mind down the road and say well I'm going with a different inverter or we decided to get out of it or my wife is sick or some other situation and I'm like well I already spent the money on ordering this or doing this for the business or whatever then what do I do so that's why I don't like doing that so it is what it is but um, at any rate Thanks again for all of your support, as always. I do appreciate your understanding. And Genetry Solar is not going away, but the phones might take a pause or be more difficult uh, just because that's what I have to do until the stock is flowing in and sales are flowing out and money's coming in on a regular basis. It's just the way it is. So, anyway, thanks again for all of your support, as always, and take care.